Hi folks, uh, so this is a, a video I've considered uh, filming for quite a while, but I just never quite figured out how to do it, and I think today I finally have that sorted out. So what we have here today is a uh, Ilco uh, sort of quick set compatible, uh, or at least quick set keyway um, rim cylinder. Nothing really special about it. Really, the only reason we're using it is because I have a whole ton of uh, quick set blanks and not a lot of use for them. And uh, I got a whole box of these uh, recently that I am fixing up to turn into training locks for my local uh, tool chapter. And what we're going to do today is we're going to see if we can impression this on camera, show you a bit of the process uh, and how it's done. So what we have is a Fremen uh, impressioning handle. You don't need to spend like a hundred dollars on one of these. You can just go get uh, a cheap uh, pair of vice grips and they will work pretty well. I just got this uh, when I was uh, in trade school um, because it was an opportunity to get some nice uh, tools for myself. And we, when you're doing this professionally, uh, nice tools are a nice thing to have. Uh, what we, uh, we also have a uh, quick set uh, blank that I have prepared by running it through a key machine uh, just to mark each of the cut positions which should make it a little bit easier when we are hunting for uh, marks. Now we have our cylinder locked up in a vise. If you're doing this professionally, uh, obviously, usually your locks, the locks that you're dealing with will not be uh, in a bench, in, in, a, in a vise on a workbench, uh, but will instead be, uh, you know, mounted somewhere. Um, we have a uh, this is a six-inch uh, number uh, Swiss cut number two file uh, in a Pippin profile uh, from Grobay. This is part of my uh, collection. Uh, I like this just because uh, the number two rather than the number four cut is a little bit coarser, so it cuts a little bit faster, which means that this video hopefully won't be uh, like half an hour long. And... Uh, well, that's about it, really. Um, normally, if I'm trying to get a really, really good uh, impression uh, of a of a lock, or if I'm trying to do very fine work, I'll switch to the finer number four cut, uh, which just gives you a little bit more control, but uh, cuts a bit more slowly. And then we have a key gauge. Uh, we'll be using this side, the quick set side, because this is pinned to match quick set depths. Uh, and then we have the last and one of the most important things is an illuminated magnifier. This is actually a, like a desk lamp with a built-in magnifying glass. Um, it's very useful, uh, but again, if you're in the field, usually you won't have that. Uh, you'll have a pocket magnifier of some kind, but this is a lot easier to get on camera and uh, a little bit easier to use while I'm trying to do things with like four different hands. Uh, so uh, the last thing to note is this lock came with a uh, uh, sort of flat beveled pins similar to uh, Quickset's factory pins. I replaced them with uh, conical tipped lab pins because the uh, sharper point on them uh, makes it a little bit easier uh, to impression things. And with that, let's uh, get started. So we are going to take our blank, make sure it is securely mounted in the impressioning handle. We are going to insert it, turn firmly, and wiggle up and down and then turn back the other way and wiggle up and down. And now we are going to examine this 
in the magnifier. And hopefully we will have some marks here. And what I'm seeing is marks on three, four, and five. I think three and five are the ones that we need to pay attention to. Uh, the shape of mark on number four is a tiny bit different. Um, and this sort of suggests that this actually may already be at the shear line. Just a tiny difference in those marks. But that's really kind of what we're dealing with. So first thing to do is make sure that you keep your uh, file perpendicular to the keyblade and you want There we go. Smooth, sure strokes, straight across, keeping it nice and level. And we're going to do the same in position five. The first couple of cuts are always a little bit tricky uh, because you'll be trying to cut into a flat surface. So the file will try to walk all over the place. Not quite there, a couple more swipes. Another thing is making sure that you have enough pressure on your file. Too much and you just kind of get jammed up there. Uh, not enough and your file will walk all over the place. So get that key inserted again, twist and Wiggle, and twist, and wiggle, and let's see what we've got. So it looks like we still have a mark in position 5. But I'm now seeing marks in 1 and 2. So I'm thinking 1 is looking a bit more likely. Let's check your depth every so often as you go along. You don't want to cut too deep, because you can always take more material away, but you can't put it back. So that is now a number two depth. And I'm going to go for the same. There. So that looks about right brush off some of the shavings. And let's see. So there, there, and there. So uh, positions one, three, and four are all giving us uh, these marks that show, these are actually marks left because the pins are at the shear line and cannot move at all versus the marks in two and five, which are a little bit fainter but a little bit better defined uh, which indicate that they are binding so we're going to and let's 
let's check. Should be almost at a number three depth, yes. And yes. Brush the shavings off again and just have to keep angling this uh, to try to get the light just right so that you can see any marks. I am not seeing anything clearly there, so... making sure that we're really putting a lot of turning pressure on it as we wiggle. And now I'm seeing slightly better mark on, uh, on position two, right there. Not seeing anything now there may be something on the slope of position five right about here, if I can get the light right for you. A very, very faint mark it's right there near the edge. Let's, uh, let's give that a try. So we're going to cut deeper. on position two. We're actually going to cut a little bit wider on position five. And let's check those depths. Okay, that needs to go a little bit deeper. And yeah, that's still a three, which is fine. Quite there. And there we go. There were four depths. And let's see how we're doing. So we are still getting marks on position two. And we're getting very faint marks on position number five. Hopefully you can see that. It's a little bit difficult to see through the screen there, but just a little bit forward of the center of that cut and a little bit forward of the center of that cut. And the next thing to pay attention to is notice how uh, the sides of this cut are starting to get almost vertical as we go down. That is going to cause us a problem if we don't widen those out a bit because those vertical edges can trap the key behind a pin, and we don't want that. So, that in, I have a lot of torque. And let's see how we're doing now. So there's very clear marks, like on number four, usually an indicator that uh, the pin is already at uh, the shear line and we're getting similar marks in one and two 
Need a little bit of marking on number five right here. So let's check our depth for that. That's a almost perfect three. That's number four. So I'll try just one more time. Really torque it over. And the grip is slipping a little bit, so I'm going to tighten it up. Okay, so we're getting some pretty clear marks on number five now. So we're going to cut position five a bit lower, going for a number four depth. As I do this, I'm going to angle the file from side to side just to make sure that we get that sort of V-shape to the cut instead of vertical wall so that the key does not become trapped. And remember, hard torque over and seeing any new I am seeing some new marks in position 2 right there uh, and the marks that I'm getting now in number 5 uh, in position 5 look like uh, the pin is hitting the shear line now so we should be pretty close so now taking Cut number two down to a depth of five, nearly there. that open. And if we turn the other way, all right, it's a little tight still, so let's take a look at any marks we're getting. So if the camera will cooperate and focus, you see that big mark right there? That is, the cut is a tiny bit high, but we got it but we got the pin close enough to the shear line that it was able to press itself into the blank. So if we file that down a tiny bit more, yeah, we are getting very close to number six depth. And that is feeling fairly smooth. Still giving us a little bit of that mark of the pin deforming the blank. There we go, nice and smooth and everything feels loose. And if we measure that again, 
Yeah, that is just about a six cut. So it probably was originally a six, and between the pin being deformed by our impressioning and the blank deforming, we've got this just about at a number six. So we have our uh, impression key, and if I go and find the uh, keys that I have off to the side here, well, here we can read the direct code, 26214, and if we hold up this key next to the one that we just impressioned, you can see pretty similar, 2621 and 4. And that is how you impression a lock. So, uh, you know, I realized that was not necessarily the most uh, or the best uh, instruction in this ever, but, um, well, hopefully it was useful. And uh, if it wasn't, uh, let me know and I will keep trying to improve this. So until next time, everyone, have fun and happy picking.